Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a George Westinghouse standout who made his name on the playgrounds of New York City. He also was my teammate on the Madison Square Broncos AAU team and the Hirsch All-Stars, R.I.P. the Hirsch. This basketball head also helped our team win the Brevoort Coliseum Championship in 1988. College basketball was not part of the long-term plans because he had to focus on home. I know all too well about that. But this just made him more determined to make a name for himself before it was all said and done. No matter if it was Brevoort, Soul in the Hole, LG, West 4th, Nike Pro-Am, or Rucker Pro-Am, he was doing just that. And oh yeah, he also won championships in every last one of those tournaments. In the late 80s and early 90s, this basketball head was leading every tournament in block shots while running the basketball scene and the party scene. As a 6'11 club dancing professional, that's right, he was in the clubs, grip shoes and all. I've literally seen him grab the Studio 54 ball while dancing in the middle of the dance floor. With all those things going on that did not stop him from playing on pro teams in the USBL and CBA. He also appeared in the basketball movie On Hollow Ground, which won an Emmy and featured some of New York City's legendary players, like our next guest. Without further ado, help me welcome to the show George Westerhouse standout and New York City playground great, Shane Captain Nappy Dresdom. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. yes. You have you just stepped out into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on. Come on. Go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Buy your tickets because the game about to start. What up, man? Let me get some light in that room, man. I ain't no light in that room. Come on, man. Let's lock this thing up. How's that? You need more? Nah, you dog. That's what I was thinking. I... You have to put a light in. Is it, let's, let's try to get some where we get some more light because I can't see you. That's better or no? You need more light. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, fam. Oh, you got that nice jersey on too. Oh, you you know what you, you know what I'm rocking today. I I I want to see it. I want to see it. I can't see it. That's that Cowboys. No. Man, this is OJ Simpson. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Stop original. This one I run on Ju Ice. Don't get so stuck. You already know this official right. OJ. That's <laughs> you right. know who I am. That's right. Yo, man, long time I'm, coming. I just want to let the people know that my guy was in front. He had things to do, so we here now. Pardon, pardon the the interruption. Don't worry about it, fam. We got we got some time, man. Uh, and, and my guy already did the picture. It's much better. Okay. If you guys can please Shane, if you guys can see Shane, give me some thumbs up and you can see Shane the other side. Uh, yes, no, maybe so. Give me some thumbs up if you guys can see Shane. Good. Okay. Oh, Haas. What up, Haas? That's right. That's bigger than Yeah. God. 
That, that, that's the one in a million right there. That's my big brother. That's right. Good luck. Y'all don't, don't even know. Oh, that's a lot better, Shane. Yep. You know, you know how he developed that rainbow shot? Shooting over you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Every day of practice. He said, you're not going to. And, and nobody caught a shit. After, nobody caught a shit. Rad couldn't catch it. Nobody could catch it. Oh, man. How is it smooth? Put that, he put that belly on you. And listen, Haas, I got to get you back on for season two because for some reason, all of your interview didn't save. And I was like at the beginning when uh, IG was letting us, was allowing us to save our videos. So we definitely going to do part two of season two. All right, my God. You here now. All right. So first question, right? Well, I always ask everyone, and then we can get right straight to the interview. Okay. Who introduced you to the game? Arnie Hershkowitz. Y'all want me to explain that? Yo, would you? Uh, I'm waiting for you along. It's your oh, time. Okay. okay. Well, gee, you know, I didn't, I didn't touch a rock until I was 15, and I was in Hersh's math class, and so through my freshman, sophomore year, you know, Westinghouse. The whole school had a bunch of 6'10", 6'9", guys. I, I was on the baseball team, the track team. I didn't play ball at all. One day, we're in the, I'm in the, um, the, the gymnasium. And, you know, our school was all world as far as basketball. Right. And, and Keith Stroud was, was – y'all know Big Cheese, right? That's Keith right. Stroud, that's right. Legendary Keith Stroud. Right. He, he, he was in the gym. And it was like him, and and it was a couple. Uh, it was um, Leroy Brantley. Um, like we, it was crazy people. Hold on, hold on. Let, go, go, let people know who Leroy Brantley is, because I probably they probably know about the last name, but they don't know who he is. Listen, names have to be changed to protect the innocent. You, you know what I'm saying? If you want me to tell you who he is. Like he's, he's, he's worldwide. He's nice. Uh, he's nice. He's nice. Yeah. And, and 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 you and don't want to see him on the streets. And his son is Khalil Bradley. Oh, I have no yeah. idea. He's nice. He, he is the number one player in New York City, besides uh him and I would say uh you have Juan Carlos and and the other guys from the Bronx, St. Ray's, Malachi Smith. But he is oh, the leading well, scorer in New York City with, I think, 34 points a game. He played for Boys High. Oh, oh okay, okay. Now he's at Alcadia Lutheran because of oh. the pandemic stuff. Oh, okay. And, and Brian Brantley, too. I got to get big ups to his brother. Oh, yeah, Brian. He's, super you know, baller. Super intelligent. Yeah. I, absolutely. And, and he's a baller baller. You, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He's a basketball We're going to talk about what's a baller baller in, in a second. Okay. No, no, no. No. The but anyway, is let me basketball tell you head. Head. It's basketball head. Not baller baller. We're going to say basketball head for tonight. Okay. Basketball. When I say baller baller, you, I, I'm just yeah. If you're a basketball head, you love the game and you love it to the death. Well, bottom line is I was in the gymnasium and I was playing volleyball with a bunch of chicks and everything. I'm 15 years old and the ball rolls over to, to Keith Stroud. And, and Keith wouldn't give me the ball back. And he's the man in high school. Like everybody knows. He wouldn't give me the ball. And he's like kind of picking on me. It's like, and, and he's actually playing basketball with the volleyball, right? And he's drop. you know, Keith had the illest drop step. Yes. And, 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 okay, so we ain't even going to talk about it. Nobody can touch his drop step except me. I <laughs> punched Keith shot three times in a row and never could actually never played the game. The right. next day, Hirsch and Irv Turk, we're going to talk about Irv Turk, they was in the gym that day, and they was like, and Hirsch walked up to me and was like, hey, why don't you try out for the basketball team? And I said, I ain't trying. He said, I give you a pair of sneakers and a polo shirt. And I said, 
Okay, but he I'm says, there. all you got to do is try out. If you don't make it, it's okay. I was the last person to make my team my junior year in high school. Wow. And, and that's and then I met you guys, and by the beginning of my senior year, I was top 100 in the country. <laughs> Check my stats. Check my stats. <laughs> talk that talk. Where, where you from in Brooklyn, Shane? I'm from East New York, Pink Houses, Building 17. Don't get it fucked up. And we do it mean on this side. You know, East New York, we do don't, we don't talk. Like, get it? Don't get it? You know, I, I would come out to Bree Voight and pop shit, tell my man horse. I, I punch this shit. Matter of fact, what, what's your next question? No, okay. <laughs> that's how I met the game. That's, that's how I met the game. That's how I was introduced to the game. And, and, and right. Hirsch, and Hirsch, after I made the team, he um, he took it upon himself to mentor me. And the way he mentored me is that he got guys that were older than me that he already had took care of before me to come back and beat me up early in the morning. That's Walter Berry. I'm a junior, and Walter Berry is destroying me in, 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 before I go to school, like in my junior year. That's John Sally destroying me. That's Ed Pickney destroying me. That's uh, uh, oh, the, Richie Adams destroying me. And then I was like, no, no more. <laughs> and that's a good training right there. Oh yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. It was it was no practice. It was no. They were they just played against. We just did one on ones in the morning, like my whole junior year in high school. It says, yo. <laughs> Who's oh, that? Garfield Smith. He says, oh, Dave been wild. Dave been wild since day one. Don't let it, don't let it, it no. You are the original Rodman. No, no. Rodman was jacking my swag from day one. Y'all all know it. Y'all all know it. That nigga ain't for real. <laughs> Y'all know it. So so let's let, this this go on because I'm gonna pop a lot of shit. No, no, and, yeah. So and anybody and I, and I want objections. I want objections with my rejections. Uh, okay, let's let's get it let's get it popping. Cause everybody yeah. caught some of this glass. You too. Well, I was gonna I was gonna ask you at what <laughs> age did you fall in love with the game? But as I remember. You just liking the game and not really loving it. No, okay, let me explain to you. I love competing against superior physical specimens. I, th that's period. Like, I, I'm a renaissance physical athlete. Y'all know I could dance. I could play every sport well. I'm about being nice. Like, you know, I always had to be on the starting five, period. So... How can I be on the starting five, never get off the court, punch everybody's shit all game long? Is, is Pat Alphonse, Pat Alphonse in the building. He said, what up? Oh, yeah. That, I was just talking to G earlier today. He was just, we were just talking you up. What's good? What's good? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's my dude. That's my yeah. dude. But that's day one. So when you was, coming, up, when you was coming up, Right, and you started to uh, play basketball, start to figure out who was the guys in the neighborhood who was good, who was the nicest guy in East New York when you was coming up. Nigga, why are you even going to ask me that? The nicest guy, oh, I forgot. I'm just going to take the nicest guy in East New York is literally the nicest guy that I ever played against in the game of basketball, period. I ain't seen nobody better. Still to this day, I I, I put the, maybe Jordan. Yeah, Jordan's better, but he only did better. But the nicest, you know who the nicest is, man. Like, did I, I? I probably spoke to him this morning. Who are you talking about? We talk about Sweet Pea, son. He, he nice. told me tell you what's up. I spoke to him this morning. I told Sweet him I was having you on tonight. He said, "Tell my boy Shane." I said, what's up? What's I'm up? sure he did. He and is he nice. Got, and you got him hyped because now he's he definitely coming on season two. Yo, let me tell you. Let me tell you. 
Lloyd, let me tell you, Lloyd is one of the, the biggest reasons I got down in the whole community. Lloyd liked my game, and he said he's playing with me every place. Like, Lloyd wouldn't let me play against him. I never played in a game against Lloyd, ever. I only played with him. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me take that back. One time we played against him, and mm -hmm. he was in that game, and that was a very significant game. Yo. Let me tell y'all. Go yeah, ahead. Jay, you want to break down the game? Because I remember vividly what happened. Okay, they I had, remember vividly they what happened. No if they had every player in New York City who was nice at that time, besides the people that was on Riverside, but they had everybody else. I'm talking about Matt Tucker, everybody. Everybody. They, everybody on the crew. We, we had Jason, we had Doc, we had Juice, it was you, it was me, uh, we, and, and we was playing against Gauchos, and they gave it to us that day. But that day no, changed. No, no, the, the championship we won. Remember, remember, Lloyd, Lloyd at 47, he wouldn't sub out the game. Remember, he wouldn't sub out the game, and that threw their whole team shit off. Dave couldn't sub him out. He wouldn't get out the game. So well, I can make whole continuity off, and we wound up winning. Keith Stroud was on that team, too. Keith Stroud played in that game, too. But here's yeah. the thing. That game was the, like, all time, and, and I'm saying this, so any, so I'm, I'm going to admit to this, and then anybody tell me. All time, all time, five guys caught me. Five guys caught me all time. The first one that I got, was in that game, and me and you got it at the same time, and I refuse to get dunked on like that again. Yep. Yo, yo, don't say, don't put me in that shit. Cause you, you I was, was holding on to his leg. Yo, he was it was Chris Brooks. Yes, and me yo, and you called him out. No, yo, time <laughs> out. Time <laughs> out. Time out. Time out. Yo, time out. I wasn't playing center. You and you, you, we let, me was for let, the me boy. let me explain, <laughs> let me explain, Chris Brooks, you push Chris Brooks under the backboard, he bounced that shit and jumped backwards, hit you in the chest, moved backwards, and dumped on that shit, yes, now, was I in the vicinity, I saw it happen, you was holding his leg. We no, was running man, for the I ball. Not, the ball was on his leg. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let okay. me tell you. But, but here's the bottom line. Yes. Chris up was off the chain. Yes, Chris Brooks, okay. Lloyd Daniels, Arthur Bernard, Dal Reed, they had a crew. Right. Now, now, but that day was the day I, I, I developed the NDP. You know what that is, right? What's that? An NDP. Oh, that you ain't for me. MDP is my high school. school. Martin DePores, that's my high school, MDP. <laughs> no, NDP. Oh, no okay. dog policy. No dog policy. NDP. Now, yeah, you go into the archives, you ask everybody who caught me. I was under the rim every game. I averaged over 10 blocks every tournament, every league. Who caught me? You're right. And I don't and I don't foul niggas. You right. I don't even try to foul niggas. I, I don't even deny niggas the ball. I want everybody to get the ball. Because if you can score on me, then you nice. And if you can't, you better pass that shit. And if you don't have a jump shot, keep it moving. Yo, I I, I would say you and Dwayne Coswell are some of the best two shot blockers, and I think you kind of edged them. In this category, um, but no, I see not even close. Dwayne, Dwayne is my man. I love him. He can't block shots nowhere near me and Rad. And we gonna keep it straight. Rad, yes, yeah, Rad is another one. R.I.P. Rad. Yes, great shot. Me, me and Rad. Do, do you remember when we played at West Fourth Street? Me and Rad was on the same team. God bless the dead. The dead. Yo. We 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 was air traffic controllers. You, you get air time. You get the whole the youngsters. We destroyed West Fourth Street that year, and then Rad passed away. It just killed the vibe and all that stuff. But 
it was it was it was unstoppable. Everybody was like, I don't even want to see them. Did, and that was the only did you ever have a battle? Did you ever have a battle? What are you talking about? Did me and Rad ever battle? Me and Rad was in the same inner clique. With that's that Hirsch family, like we that that inner Hirsch family. Rad, me, Lloyd, um, Bud, uh, um, Ty. Um, Ty who the, who's the kid that just went to jail? <laughs> the, you know, he was in the, the high school teacher, Ty Day, Tyrone. Todd, Todd Miles. Todd Miles, right. He was in the inner circle with the Hirsch clique, too. It was certain guys that was like Hirsch guys. Skip Tamalu, Stephon Marbury. Um, um, I think who, who, me and Steph, I think me and Steph are the only two Lincoln guys who dared to play with Hirsch? Because in the beginning, I, I, I was the first. I, I don't remember any other Lincoln guy. I remember my coach telling me to stay away, but I was too cool with y'all. No, and no, Hirsch no. never did anything wrong with me. But then OJ Nabonde played with us? Uh, uh, Dave Adabanjo did not play with us. Yo, what did you call him? His name is Dave Adabanjo. You mean OJ Nabonde? <laughs> You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's his name spelled backwards. Yes, yes. You remember, yeah. Yeah, you remember right. when you kill him? OJ the Bonde, his name spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, mind, yo. How did you go to West House and not Jeff? Um, nigga. I wanted to go to the hottest high school in New York City, and it was Westinghouse. And all y'all niggas know, we was downtown Brooklyn. Every every day in our lunchroom, uh, Eric B. was in there. Every day in our lunchroom, um, Dana Dane was in there. You know, the sidelines of our high school game, Biggie and Jay was at our games, period. They, 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 they know Hassan. They know me by our first names because we was – the captains of the basketball team. Like, I, I got some, I got some, some of those stories too. Cause you know I play with bad, well, whatever. We're just keep it moving. But we're definitely gonna get up to that point. Yeah, Westinghouse was nothing to fuck with, and it was just, it was just the the spot to be. It was, it was the um, the, one of those, it, those points in New York City where things were emerging. The music was coming out of there. The athletes were coming out of there. The women were coming out of there. It was just, it was downtown Brooklyn. People don't even understand what these youngsters right now, if they understood what Arby Square Mall was in, in 87. That's what right. What Arby Square Mall was in, like, they, they don't even understand that. But, you know, it, it was, it was, a, it was a, it, it, like I said, it was a whole, kind of street mechanics we were on back then. We did everything. We right. were graffiti writers. We were dancers. We were, you know, we, we were no, ballers. You was dancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we going to get to it, yo. Yo, now listen. I had Hassan on, had Joe Green on, had Joe Jackson on. And all of them said, as a head coach, Turk was just a guy there to make sure you guys had a coach. He wasn't really a basketball coach. He was more of a teacher than basketball coach. And you're asking me if that's true? Yes. I got nothing bad to say about that guy. No, it's not anything bad. So oh, okay. Uh, the, well, the only thing that I would say about Turk was that um, – I mean, I don't really got I, like you used to I, you used to talk like him and Hirsch a lot before I even met oh, yeah. Turk. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 get your fucking finger out your ass. This is him throwing his hand on. Get your fucking finger out. Ah, uh, shout, shout, yo. The way he used to yell at Shannon was crazy. Shout, <laughs> Hassan. Remove your fat ass. He was he was good at cursing at us. He, <laughs> he was really good at cursing at us. But but you know, but he he he's the guy that fucked me up mentally for for because I never you know I never practiced. I never worked on my game. I never did none of that stuff. All so I did was. So this is what I was practice. saying. So this is what I'm saying, right? Because right. 
I, was, I mean, even after that, I just played. That was the that was my practice. I just played and I run. I never did nothing. I just the game just came natural to me. I I, I just I never worked on it. I never nothing. It just was like I could just block shots and run like a gazelle all day long, and it was nothing nobody could do about it. And that was it. And but um 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 uh, Hirsch, he he was. Like the recruiter, he was trying to, at that time in high school, a lot of it was about talent and who had the most talent. You guys had coaching and talent. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, and then y'all had Tiny. Tiny is amazing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people don't understand the mind that that guy had at 15. And it's no surprise that he molded or the whole next generation of uh, basketball players, and you know, me and Tiny got the history. We went to college together. We did so much stuff together. That dude is my brother for life. You, you know what I'm saying? But he he better back, not come back. down to pay me either. No, <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, I I know you guys got had some legendary stories, and oh, we definitely yeah. shared the same at, at Lincoln. And why I brought up your coach is because when we I was talking to you know Gerald and Joe and Hassan, I remember my sophomore year when we played y'all, um, I don't think you was on the team then, um, you guys were stacked, right? And a much better team than what we had, um, and we wound up winning. And then the next year, kind of the same thing, um, but we used to always, on my team, after the game, we used to be like, damn, we won, and couldn't believe we won because you guys are so talented. And what me and Hassan, you know, finally talked about was like, yo, G, let me tell you, her, uh, Turk was a great man, but he didn't have the basketball mind. And you guys had some great players, some great players that came out of Western House. You know, so definitely salute to Turk, man, and, and the rest of you guys' team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it, that, that, it was all centered around, a lot of it had church. And, and you can't Westinghouse be a powerhouse or even having players without her. Now. I had triple doubles. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. You were buffering, so we probably have to go back. All right, so you were saying you were, you was buffering, so I didn't hear anything you said. Oh, okay. So can you hear? Can you hear after, after, after what I said, what, I, what I didn't hear your response. Oh, I, I was basically saying that you know we beat y'all that that my senior year without me. And then we lost to Grady in a heartbreaker. And uh, I yeah, had triple double. That. I just said that, yeah. Yeah, oh, and I, and I had triple doubles and fouled out in, in the, the beginning of the second half. And we were up 13, and we winded up losing by seven. And we beat, and the team that won the city that year, we beat them without me. And so. Her, Turk didn't really know how he didn't know that I fouled out the game he used to get confused between me and Shannon so when I had four fouls he didn't pull me out the game and he thought and he was like hey he, he was actually subbing me when I fouled out the game because he thought that the other two fouls that were gotten was on Shannon <laughs> but this is the kind of thing we're talking about right oh yeah constantly right. constantly constantly yeah so Pat Alphonse said, after the game, right, you would go to the garage, 
Then he will wash his clothes at 9 a.m., a block from the club. How legendary is that? Yo, yo. He, he, Patty said he did that, or he's telling you that I did that? He said that's some shit you to do out to the garage. <laughs> Nigga, listen. <laughs> I will burn you. Y'all yeah, all know. Don't don't even test me on this dance shit. That's first of all. Don't don't call me out. Yes, I was in the garage. I'm one of the illest. I was in Studio 54. I was in Choices. I was in Area. I was in Latin Quarters. I, I am the club head. I, right. You see what I'm wearing, right? You see y'all see this, right? <laughs> That's juice, nigga. J-U Ice. Everywhere. Everywhere. Madison Square Garden. Radio City Music Hall. Big up. G-Ray. Y'all know who G-Ray is? Yo, G-Ray is the King Access. Of New York. Now, now, everybody big up G-Ray right now. Oh, 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 now oh, we're going to make some noise. We're going we to make some noise for G-Ray right now, for sure. We're going to make some noise for G-Ray. Y'all already know. Ray is a legend. Salute to my God, G. Ray. Exactly. If you don't exactly. know who G. Ray is, you don't need to know. Salute exactly. To my God, G. Ray. Like, exactly. It, it, all access. That's all you got to know. Admit one. That's it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yo, you're so crazy, yo. So Big crazy. crazy. So, oh, so, Shane. Oh, because I said in the intro, and I don't think people really believe me, I seen you in the middle of the dance floor. Because if I'm coming to Studio 54, I'm looking for my guy. All that do is look in the middle of the dance floor. Shane has the Studio 54 ball while he's on the ceiling. He's dancing with the shit in his hand. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And they can do a kick with the grip shoes. He's 6'11". Let him know. And then drop into a split. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then dance all night. Sweating. Go straight to West 4th Street in cowboy boots and get triple doubles. And Yo, go home. Go to right. sleep. Go home. Go to sleep. Wake up and literally go to the garage again. Leave the garage, jump over the fence, swim in Carmine Street pool, go to West 4th Street, play five more games with Sherm. Big up Sherm. Yes. Big up Sherm. And Big he's up Sherm. down at West 4th Street. Big them up. That's uh, right. That's right. Gary Gnu and all those niggas. <laughs> and, and, and Ross. Big up all those guys. And, and then... I would go uptown and, and make some money in the record. <laughs> That's right. And with, who, who did you dance with at MSG? Say and that's what we're going. What are you talking Pat, about? Pat said MSG, so I'm thinking, Master Square Garden, who did you dance with in there? Because I know you no, danced no, with everybody. He, he just, he's just talking about how we used to just have the old the juice at the door. Oh, oh, for, sure. oh for sure. Oh, for right, sure. Right, right, right. Let's tell the world right now. The world right now, that whole Western House Brooklyn crew, we were walking in the door to Jordan games with no ticket. J.U. Ice all Fact. the way front Fact. and back door. Fact. They don't even know. We was big up G-Ray again. Big up G-Ray again because you know no, I got to New York up. City basketball. If you was part of New York City basketball law, let me tell you something. In the 90s, the club scenes was crazy in New York City. And everybody wasn't invited. No. You had to you know somebody. And we was a, it was to the a door and you, you, want story? You, you want me to give you a story? I, I'm, I, 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 I'm uptown chilling in the bed. You know what I'm saying? And Hirsch calls me. E. Mobley and his brother, he just made the lead. They're standing in front of Nels. He's just signed a million dollar contract. It's two other guys from the Bucks there with him, and the guys at Nels won't let them in. 
He's with Hirsch. Hirsch calls me. And immobile, you know, whoever's, he calls me, and I come down to um, Nell's with a West Fork shirt on, shorts and sneakers, and you know how you got to be. And I go up to my dude, and I, first of all, they part the rope for me. As soon as I walk up, they don't even look at what I got on because it don't matter because y'all know who I am. I'm Snake. Straight like that. Like, don't, don't get it fucked up. Everybody know I ain't lying. I, I, had, I walked in every club with a crew anytime I wanted, straight up, on dancing skills. The, yo, the yo, hold, 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 hold on, Shane. We gonna make some noise for that. Because I don't think people really realize how you shut New York City down on the court and the dance floor. I'm trying to tell you that, like I said, I'm going to pop a lot of shit on this thing. And somebody tell, because I got more. You you, you said I, there's no league I ever played in that I didn't get the most blocks. That's first of all. And I led every team I ever played on in minutes. No coach would ever take me out the game. Dr. Selly didn't take me out the game. Uh, Don Jenkins, you remember Don? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never took me out the game. Mr. Launch never took me out the game. Mousy would never take me out the game. Big up Peter Shue never took me out the game. Big up Ed and, Smir Ed and Smitty never take me. I never come out the game. Never come out the game. And every single New York guard, they know who I am. You know why? Because they had to turn around and go get their shot. They had to turn around and go get their shot. And you know what? They had to do it a couple of times. A couple of times. That summer. You had to get some real jelly on your shit. Or it wasn't, it wasn't, get, it, you, had, you had to have that shit. Yeah, yeah. What was life like for you after you left Western House? And, and, and I'm going to leave this up to you. Right? You tell me the school that you went to, and that's going to be on you right here. That's, this is your time. Okay. Everybody that knows me, okay, first of all, let's get a big up. And everybody from 1986 to 2000, there's nobody that's wilder than me. Nobody in the whole New York basketball scene. I, I walked out on, you know, I walked out on top 20 coaches because they didn't call me Snake, nigga. <laughs> they didn't call me Snake, and I said, yo, you can take your scholarship and shove it. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that's who I was. My freshman year in college, I led the nation in blocks. I was second in the nation to Larry Johnson. I came home. Now, I'm from the East, so the East is a beast, and sometimes the beast got to eat. And sometimes it may eat people in your family, and then you got to slow up, and it change up your direction and things like that when you're fighting the beast. But then I went to St. John's because I was like, oh, I'm going to go there and, and just rock over there. Malik is there, Jason there. You know Jason, my big brother. He's like, yeah, come. So I, I'm redshirting at St. John's, second player in the nation. I'm wilding now, son. I'm I'm in New York City. I'm I'm hanging out with every rapper. You know, Spinderella's my peoples. I'm smoking bloods with fucking Mr. Cheeks. I, I y'all don't even understand. Like I was living La Vida Loca. Y'all guys was working on your game, and I had game. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't even understand. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't the drugs. It wasn't the streets. It was the scene. People don't even understand. Like, big up G Ray. We was going to fucking MTV Awards, the Oscars, anything we wanted to go to at 18, 19 years old with no money in our pockets. We was living on this. Oh, Jay. Oh, Jay. Y'all know this shit is official. I wore this shit just for y'all niggas. Who got this? Who got this OJ shit? Snake. That's who. Y'all know. But, <laughs> I ain't shit right now. So, so, 
Yeah, we 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 moved to there. Where okay, was so, you, so, you so now the after, after yeah. St. John's, after mm -hmm. St. John's, I went out to Cali. I had to get out of there, right? Went out to Cali, and now I'm out there with Dow Flowers and Lance Stevenson. You know, those my those my Dow Flowers Lance Stevenson. and Senior. Yeah, Lance Stevenson Senior. I got a story about Lance Stevenson Junior too. It's very significant, very, very, very significant. The Lance Stevenson Jr. story, but yeah. I'm out there with Lance and and and, and Dow Flowers, and I'm wilding out there on the, yeah, on the Soul Train line, and I went to Soul Train. We, you know, I, I went out to Cali just to go to Soul Train, and then I was like, I was out there. Hey, oh Lord, the, we gonna make some noise for that because I don't think people <laughs> believe you. I know you. I know you probably did. I know that's what you did. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and on top of it, I was on scholarship out there, and I was flying home every weekend to go to the garage. Every I was flying from Cali on the weekends to go to the garage because the garage was about to close. <laughs> on scholarship. So oh, then, shit. so then after that, right? So, so, so now Hirsch is, Hirsch is trying to save me. You know, Hirsch loved me. He'd do anything. He like anything. You know, coaches, they try to get me in schools. Mike Brown. Y'all remember Mike Brown? He was the assistant at Seton Hall. Mike Brown came and scooped me up. He loved me. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, come over here. I got the head coach job at Central Connecticut State. And then I went to Central Connecticut State. And... I was there for like two years, and needless to say, <laughs> first, I was asked to leave. I got arrested. I was in Sports Illustrated. I got banned from a tryout from the NBA, and the school went on probation. And everybody that was at the school bounced. And, I, and I'm talking about Obed, Tiny, and, and 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 on top of it, I had to go to the club the next day. I was so mad that the niggas <laughs> locked me up because I can't get to the club. Y'all, y'all, you understand? Like Larry the Red was playing at Studio Fifty Four, and y'all, y'all, you understand? That's that's La Vida Loca. That's La Vida Loca. So, so then what what happened after that? Uh, uh, you you uh, tell me tell me tell me uh something with you and Tiny man. Nothing too crazy, <laughs> but you know that's my guy too. Okay. And I didn't get a chance uh, okay. to call him like you asked. Okay, me. This, this is what I'm going to tell y'all about Tiny. Tiny. I love that guy's game. I love that guy's game. I watch guards like like a hawk. I'm watching them. And Tiny, I've seen them all. I played with Kenny, Rod, Mark Jackson, Tiny, everybody. A Train, uh, I, I, Todd Day, Kareem Reed. I, all of the nicest fucking niggas I played with, or they tried to lay me. They tried to lay me. Who laid me? Exactly. I made Rod Strickland pull up in West 4th Street, niggas, several times. And he nice. He laid me a couple times, though. I ain't gonna lie. Bro. I got him. But I punched his shit a few times. And, and that's something to say. I even caught Kenny shit a bunch of times, and he's one of the most crafty dudes yeah. around the room yeah. that you could ever, 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 ever understand. And, and one of my favorite moments on court is when um, Steph came back from um, the NBA to play in the Rucker and we were playing against him and when we was playing against him, he did a move and went to the hole and shot the ball over me and it just went in. It was like a short little teardrop that went over my hands and went in the basket. Steph 
was so excited. He acted like he wanted because you know Steph is like I love that's my baby. You know I seen him come up. He's like one of the him and Skip. They're like the young Hirsch guys. So we watched them and we was at the entourage and I drove them home and gave them you know and showed them how to twist. You know these are my dudes. You you know what I'm saying when we was young and yeah and he just and he laid me and I and I knew yeah and but we knew Steph was getting there from age 14. We knew he had it. Like he was the one from the Marberries that was just going to get it. But yes. the, the whole thing was about Tiny. That Tiny, man, that's, we were roommates in college. That's first of all, we lived together off campus. Second of all, uh, man, now, matter of fact, Tiny's married and so am I, so I can't say anything. Oh we got to stop talking. We got to stop talking. That's my dude. That's all I got to say. That's he right, deserves all right. his accolades. That dude Salute. is the biggest reason y'all won championships, that y'all head coach did the right thing by handing the reins over to that particular player. That guy is, is a – is a, is a brain. And if we would have ever got to play together in college, he would have put me in the league. He needs to come it. back to New York City, man, and take over. Uh, Bernard Mitchell said he got you, too. Bernard Mitchell is on here. <laughs> you know my team. Go ahead. Go. Oh, but oh. Yes. Aline Scorer. Yes. <laughs> yes. He said he got me in what? And, and, he, and, he played, and he played with us in the Broncos as well. Okay, yeah, I know who Bernard. I just seen Bernard. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, spoke yeah. To, He just said he said he got me how? No, he, I don't know what he said. Was you blocked his shot or he got a layup off you? Because he just said me. I just I just saw my man put a comment. I want to no, make sure. No, no, he might have got a layup or two. I mean, yeah, yeah. A couple guys. I mean, you know, guys was head hunting for me. See, here's the thing that y'all got to really understand. Everybody wanted to dunk on me. Every single NBA player that came into the Rucker, everybody, Mace, all of them, all of them tried to dunk on me. Rad, Jason Williams, Doc, Juice, everybody. Wally, half man, half amazing, high octane. They all tried to dunk on me. Tried. <laughs> NDP, none of them caught me. None of them caught me. And I don't foul niggas and I don't run away and I play the whole game. All right. Now, Fact. what what role did basketball continue to play after you left school? See, okay, yeah, let, 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 me, let me see. This is what it is. See, Glenn, you, you got all these these studious guys that come on and they talk about the game and how it affected their life and how it built. The game was a toy to me. A game was a fat ass bitch that I fucked good for a while and then I let that hoe go and I'm good with it. I don't have no regrets or nothing. And believe me, the, the NBA missed out on me, nigga. Like you, you understand what I'm saying? The, you, the NBA missed out on me. I, I some guys that it's like, damn man, I didn't get that money, nigga. Please, it's NBA guys right now that walk up to me and go, yo, you Captain Nappy, and people don't even know who I am. It, you know, you know what I'm saying? It, and right. it's funny because I I did so much bullshit in my and everybody was like, damn, you should have made it and you fucked up and you should have did this and you should have did that. They and didn't know you. Just, and just at the end of when it was like, oh, he's like almost approaching 30 and all that stuff, all that street ball shit hit. And then it kind of made me super popular. And it didn't make me rich, but it gave everybody the, like, the, it, it, didn't make, it didn't make me a basketball player. It actually let everybody know that this dude was doing it. I, right. I, didn't become, I didn't become the shot blocker after that. I already was punching nigga shit for years and years and years before that. Right. And I don't make, and that's it. That, that that's that's just what it is. So the role it played for me was that it was, it was an experience. It was like something I did, and and it was it was good. And I met the dopest dudes, and and I had the illest adventures, and I and, and I got so much. I got the thing that you can't actually make yourself have, no matter how much money you get. 
You, you know what that is, right? Right. What is that? Let me see. I can't see on my first set. What, uh, yeah, what happened? I'm trying to see. Hold on. What is it? All right, you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm sorry. I dropped the phone. That's cool. Uh, how many films were you in because of basketball? At least a half a dozen. I did Prince. I did some stuff with Disney. I did this, this the black and white with those Wu Tang niggas. I did on Hollow Ground. I did some Slam from the Streets. I did oh what the fuck was it? some some N one shit. Uh, um, I did about six movies that I was okay. in or television show. I did some shit out in Europe, and it was just. You know, everybody was hot on that, but you know how I was, right? Like, here's the thing. Because I never grew up watching basketball, or I, it was never nobody that I was like, oh, I wanted to be that guy. And I didn't want, I wanted to be that guy. That's you true. know, I was, I was never like that. Y'all used to be like, y'all used to be told, oh, yeah, the game was on last night. And I used to be like, you know, I was watching BBC. You know, y'all know me. I'm the big nerd. You didn't watch, like, the, you didn't watch games like we did. You didn't watch didn't basketball watch. like we right. did. Right. You were into life. That's the great thing what I loved about you, fam. Still do to this day. <clears throat> because while a lot of guys would put themselves in a box, you were living outside of the box. And then a lot of us learned to start doing that once we got older. You were doing that as a young man. So everything you said, I definitely know it's official. No, no, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that because you was like, okay, so now let me go back a little bit back in time. With Glenn Harding is one of the first guys to coin me Snake. Him and Lawrence Pollard called me Snake. And from that day, I made the whole world call. You know why I dropped the name Snake, right? Because after my school went on probation and all that shit happened, the, the 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 coaches, cause you know I wouldn't let nobody call me nothing but Snake. So right. Snake is the guy that got blackballed. So I had to drop the name. I went overseas a couple of times. I went went to South America. You know I did all that CBA, IBA, and all that stuff. But it, it, I just never stuck because coaches were looking for me to give an appearance. You know, people was asking me to cut my hair. Would you tell people my locks? I have my locks in the 80s, and they wasn't letting guys get in the league with locks in the early 90s. Now everybody in the league got locks, and they was like, cut your hair. And I was like, <laughs> and I kept moving. You, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it was never the game. You know, I might have... I might have, could have made more money playing the game, but, man, I couldn't have fucked that bitch no better than I did. I don't care what y'all say. I, I don't care what y'all say, nigga. And some niggas that had that, 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 that thing, I did whatever I want, and I got every hood from, from, from Cali, you go up there and talk to Bell, talk to Biv, you go, any, go to Chicago, go to Detroit, all those niggas, I've been on their on their court in on their block, blocking their shit. Then we go smoke and drink Hennessy and get fuck with the bitches, cause that's how we do. You know that, no. that and it's mad love that fraternity. Very true. Very that, true. Everybody talks about that fraternity. People don't know that that fraternity doesn't come from college. It comes from the streets. Right. You just you take it to college, but then you bring it back home. College is only four years. We in this world our whole life, so that that fraternity that we create as ballers is 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 look look these my niggas right here. I, I love them. Like you know, I can't I can't even you know I can't even tell y'all how 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 flattered I am. But Yo, I let me tell you, we we haven't seen each other in years. And every time we see each other, it's just like the last time we saw each other. Cause you know, see, you don't want to talk about our history, but we gonna just leave that stuff. But we go, we go, we go, we go, we go, we go. We go. This, but this is my dude right here. Like he used to bring me to yo. Glenn is nice too. Six six dude with a smooth ass, slick ass handle, super ass jump. Yo, nice, super nice. 
Always yeah, like yeah. if your youngest don't know, he was super nice. He, he was it was real hard to punch his shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my brother, man. Love you for that. So yeah. I would speak on this. We won championships, right? You won championships in every tournament you played in. I won three with you. <clears throat> or was it two? Two. One in Brevoort, and then we won the AAU championship when we beat the Gauchos, right? Tell me some of uh, one of the greatest championships that you played in. Okay. Just, it could be one or two. It has to be every every championship because I know you won about 50. We'll just keep it to okay. Like, okay. two or three. Okay. Okay. I, I will give you a good one, okay? Yeah. This is a story, so it's going bigger. And, and this is a uh, – this is a, you know, you know, yeah, this is colorful. So, you know, I was doing my thing, whatever thing I was doing, right? <laughs> we, we three years undefeated with Bad Boy, right? I get caught up in something up in Valhalla. So I get snatched up. I, uh -huh. I'm locked up. We got, we got a championship game coming up in the Rucker, right? So I'm locked up. Mousy don't take me out the game. He thinks I'm a fucking like, like fucking good luck charm. He, real talk. He tells Puff I'm locked up. Puff gives him the money to come up to Valhalla to bail me out for for. But but Mousy got Mousy got you know <laughs> he a felon, so he can't bail me out. So who bails Captain Nappy out of jail? To play in the Rucker Championship, Ron yeah. Artez, Ron Artez. So, <laughs> and and we we go straight. We he we go straight from the jail. They drop me at the club. They, they, I go straight to the club from from being locked up because it was a jail party that night. And then I went home, went to sleep, got back up, and I had the illest triple double game. We played against James Ryan and Prime Time and um, um, Corey Williams. Yeah. Tried to duck it on me four times in that one game, and I smashed all four of them. Uh, Matt Tucker tried to duck on me like four times in that game. I had about 17 blocks that game. I had a triple double, and me, and it was recorded on Inside Stuff. And me and Ron Artez took home the co MVPs. Check the facts. That's what happened. That was an ill one. Then it, the other ill one was the one that I caught in West 4th Street when me and Lloyd, we all brought one home for Brownsville. To, to Big Bo King. Big up, Big Bo King. Everybody big up, Big Bo King, the original Nino, the original <laughs> son. Like, yeah, like, niggas don't even understand that the first nigga that was being referenced as son came from Brownsville was our coach. He was the first nigga that was, we, people was calling son. Would you like... Like people don't even understand. It was it was it was it was so many street mechanics going on back then. Everybody had their hands in music, in the game, in the game. Either you had a wicked jump shot, or you sold crack rock, or or, or you know how to pop lock. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, I got one of my students. What up, Nate? All right. Now listen. How did you get into the bike business, man? You see, okay, let me explain. I, 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 I'm, I'm in the business of buying and selling, okay? And, and I deal with specific items, and some of them are bikes, but there's a wide variety of other items. And, and, and basically, I have a following based on my customizing and refurbishing, but it's really all about me um, finding a way to make $1,000 and better a week without paying taxes and having a boss. That's all I'm trying to do, nigga. I'm hustling. I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler, homie. Yo, yeah, Joe, Green, Joe Green said, 
Shane would have helped us at what the house when he was there. I mean, obviously, I I I I add on to every team. I punch <laughs> niggas shit. I punch niggas shit consistently. It, it, it's no, it's no, like, what are you gonna do? Like I tell people, I'm going to get ten blocks in this game. It's going to happen. I I said it. It don't matter. Ken Bannister. I sent his shit back down court. Larry. Jo Larry Johnson, his shit down court. Alonzo Mourning, his shit down court. Sean Green, his shit down court. Oh, everybody from the city. I'm going to Sean on this. Facts. 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 All, all day. And I keep saying, who got me? And all these basketball players, who got me? Maybe some of y'all got layups, but y'all still were home with else. All right, Shane. Let's have some fun now. Okay. Top five playground legends, New York City history. Top five playground legends, New York City history. You played with a lot of them. Just, just the playground legends. We get to, we get to the other players. Let's go playground legends. Okay. Now. Okay. Uh, I, I gotta say, I gotta put Lloyd first. Okay, I gotta put Lloyd first because he's just the nicest. I'm sorry, and the the rest of the world didn't get to see him until after he had two hot ones put in him. But if you ever seen that dude play before he got it, crack or no crack, high or no high, that nigga is the truth. He's the first truth. That's first. Second, term. Term is a beast. Roman Thais, he'll be on season two. Fact. Okay. Ron Mathias is, he's another one. I, I played against him once, and he said, yo, you, I'm not playing against you no more. And, and after I played against Term one time, I ne he never let me play against him ever again. As, as Term, except for when he was in the USBL, because he was playing with, with the Long Island team, I was playing with the Connecticut team. But Term, okay. Ah, man, okay. Lloyd. Daniels, Terminator, Raw Matthias, who else? Cause you know I, I'm going. I, I'm going. It's, okay, I, I got. I got. I got. Um. Ah. Uh, 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 oh God, what's his name? I, I got this guy right here. People don't. It's unfortunate that they Carlton Hines. Carlton Hines, my God. People don't great. understand that guy. It was something special. Yes, yes, he was. Um, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to. And now I'm going to. I'm going to pick. I, I, the, 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 I'm going to tell you a guy that I have to pick. This guy. He's the only guy that I ever played with. That when I was playing with him, I stopped playing and just watched him. And that's Alamo, the Black Widow. His handle was ridiculous. Like, I used to go to Alamo for sure. Alamo. You don't make me play for Alamo. Was bananas. His handle was bananas. His he he was actually more overt with it than Skip. You know, Skip. He really had a lot of, you know, he had a lot of Flash. like. No, he had a lot of form in his flash. Like mm. he was, but but and he was he was controlled. But but people don't know. Ali used to draw baseline and throw it behind guys' backs two or three times, driving baseline. Like he used to, bup, bup, bup. like ridiculous. So I would have to say him, and then mm. last one. <laughs> You know you're going to have all your boys hitting you up in your DM like, why you ain't named me, son? Why you ain't named me? Nah, because, and, and I'm going to say, because you ain't nicer than the niggas I named. And, 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 and I'm thinking about guys that I actually seen just destroy. Like, last one, destroy. last one. Elma Anderson. Elma Anderson. Elma, 
But I gotta give Elma his props because Elma is the reason I don't have about eight West 4th Street championships. I only got like two because of Elma Anderson. And I can't I and I can't take that. That was a fucking problem. If, that dude was a problem. If Earl didn't punch Elma in the mouth, we would have won against Prime Town that year. But once Earl hit him, it changed the <laughs> dynamics of the game. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Oh. Top five tournaments in New York City. You played in them all. That's what I'm asking you. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, the, the Ruck, West 4th Street, um, Soul in the Hole, Kingdom, and... Oh my god. I, I, I wanna get I, I I I would say Gersh now, but that wasn't when I was riding. Right, so, right, right. So I, I if I had to pick the, the, the fifth tournament, I would say Nike Pro. There you go. At, at Hunter College. Yeah. Nike Pro. Yeah. At Hunter College. Those were those were the um uh, the joints right there. So, Top five big men New York City history. History or my era? Who you know? I'm only going, I'm going to ask you questions. I only go about who you know. Not oh, okay. you go back to the early 1900s. Top five big man, I have to give Strick because he was an inside player. He yeah. wasn't that tall, That's... but he was an inside player and he was just the hardest guy for me to guard. I actually don't actually have nobody else in my history of playing basketball that I thought was hard to guard. Pretty simple. I don't give a fuck who you are. Let's make and, some noise. It's R.I.P. to my guy John Strickland. Facts. Right. He was. He was the. He was the. The, the hardest guy. And then I would say, Rag. I, I. I would say Rag because Rag had like he had an intimidation dynamic and his athleticism was was explosive and. And and he 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 just he he zoned out when he was on court. Like you know what I said? You could tell he loved the game. That's my brother. And, brother. We gonna make some noise for Conrad McCray, R.I.P. Uh, See, I'm like all the shows. We don't do a moment of silence. We just make some noise. That's right. Celebrate their life. Right. So now, if I had to pick, now who who would be the fucking um? Who else? Okay, me, me, and like straight like that because everybody tried to dunk it on me. I got crazy chips. I I played all over and everybody know me and everybody tried to dunk on me. East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, they tried and they fucking failed. If if I'm lying, get on. Tell the guys that see me, say it, say it. <laughs> Two more, two more. Okay. Uh, Richie Adams. Facts. He's a Animal. monster. Let, let me tell you, Richie Adams had the most unstoppable move in, that I've ever seen. He used to jump hook down at the rim from the far line. He used to catch the ball at the far line and jump straight up and shoot the ball down. Okay, and then last one. Oh, okay, I got. I, I'm going to give it to this guy, based on this is a mentor of mine, and, and you're saying big man, and, and, and he, hmm, people, he's the most vicious dunker of them all, and he ain't get me. Troy Truesdale. Troy Truesdale. Facts. He's a monster. Facts, facts. Troy, we'll Troy, we're going to make some noise for your five. For sure. Troy, choose there. Now. And, there, and there's a lot of other guys yeah. that came out, like, 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 you know, I don't, I don't want to take anything from Dwayne, but it's guys that just didn't put in that work. Just like you, I can't, you can't say nothing. I can't say nothing about league because I, I ain't in the league and I didn't put in that work. And guys that was in the league, they wasn't on the, the record court, and they didn't put in that work. So, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the, the most annoying thing that I, I let, let, let me tell you, this is what I want to talk about. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fucked up shit that happened when the movie came out. When the movie came out on the Rucker, everybody got that fame. The Rucker organization, the players that got featured, and then everybody got separated. N1 came in, threw a couple of dollars at guys, and guys separated. And they turned the, the, the whole reason that it was special was because it was super competitive. And those tricks, those dunks, that was just icing on the actual competitive cake. And they turned the whole thing into a globetrotter trickster game. And I had no place for it because we was going on tour playing against high school gym coaches and junior high school players. And I was like, what am I supposed to do with this dude? I don't even, y'all know, I didn't even want to play in the game unless the nigga on the other side was nice. So if you wasn't nice, it wasn't no sense of me being in the game because I needed the guy to be nice so that you could see I was nice. You, you, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so what happened was everybody got separated and it got diluted and basically N1, the owners of the N1 team, sold the company off to some Chinese corporation. The, they, they started just putting guys like Wally, Shane, uh, Half Man. I, we should all be ashamed of ourselves because they let... And we let N1 make stars out of hot sauce and motherfucking the professor. And those niggas can't play no fucking ball. And anybody that's looking at hot sauce and the professor, you ain't a baller. Y'all niggas is in front of the video game like this. Because those niggas can't play. And I've been with them. Hey, and, and, and I told them, and I love them, and they good people. And I, I have nothing against black men getting their dollars, but... Don't, don't, we, some of us ball players take this shit real serious. And that, that whole shit got exploited. God bless the dead. Um, uh, Greg Maris, he didn't keep it together. He, he was supposed to create a foundation off of that. And they was trying to take vacations. Get the fuck out of here. So, so I, I just basically, when all of that shit was going down and it turned into play, play games and it wasn't competitive and everybody was trying to get a little sneaker contract and get a little bit more money than the next guy, everybody winded up not having shit. Brown, uh, uh, N1 don't exist anymore. And basic, like, Skip should have had 50% of that company. 50% of that company. And he know it now. You know, we all know that 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 was an exploitation you know what i'm saying when when we allow people who can't play the sport to dictate how the sport is played with the with the the carrot of money we lose the integrity that's why the nba is the way it is right now you know what i'm saying these big contracts they bought out the integrity of the game how dare a guy get on court like LeBron will never understand how good he could be if he played with hand checking. The guy he can't he can't be hand checked. There, there's, everybody just gets a free reign. It's a shooting contest, and you can't even compete to stop the game. And it's exploit it's exploited. And I'm mad at the NBA. I'm mad at the brothers in the NBA. You ever see how Charles Barkley and and Shaq and them be sitting up there like, okay, we're getting paid, we're getting paid. We're getting paid. And they're looking at the NBA. They're going, God, if we played, if the NBA was like this when we was playing, right. If, 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 if basketball was like this when we were playing, it, it, it's just, it's just, and, and, and it got watered down to make it more Europeanized, to make it more Asianized, to make, uh, and, to, and, and, and it's nice. We want black millionaires. We want guys to come up and, 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 and give back to the hood and all that stuff. But the game is so weak. 
I'm sorry. I'm glad I'm not a fan because I could get an objective opinion. The shit is weak. And, 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 and there's no more drop stepping. There's no more. Now niggas get, and, and get the fuck out. The whole, the whole, the whole league, the rules of the game are, 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 are dousing the athletic ability of the next generation of black men coming along because we had to tone it down so that they could play with us. Get the fuck out of here. Yo, let me explain something to you. You are, I, that's why I shut the hell up because you're so on point. I remember saying to someone when the NBA bought into NBC, I told people that was the end. But people ain't believe me because they always say, you know, you hating, you hating. I knew it. Whenever a big corporation comes in, it sucks the authenticity out of whatever it's, it's a part of. It's going to bring yeah. you money. It's going to bring yeah. you fame. But it's going to take away from the game that was natural and authentic. Do you know how long it took me to get the name Captain Nappy? Do you know you know how many you know how long it took Terminator Ron Mathias to get the name Terminator? He had to put in work. Now you go up to the rucker and do two moves and they call you Skip to Badoo and, 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 and High Superfly. Well, we're, 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 not, we're, not, we're not gonna we're not gonna put no 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 dirt on on our, on our guy Skip name, but I understand what you're saying. Because no, I use the this, I use this I use this example of and it's not the knock him, but it's a new guy, right? Uh, the kid Isaiah Washington. I said to people then, when he signed to Minnesota, I was like, yo, that's the wrong move for this kid. I don't think he's on the level. And it was like, yo, G, you don't know it's the new era. Jelly fam, he got the whole movement. The movement was better than his game. Okay, yeah. You get what I'm the saying? More? So now yeah. he went from Minnesota to Iona, and he didn't do I, 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 Iona, and since he was at Minnesota playing for Rick, uh, what's the guy there that played that coach for Louisville? Rick Pitino. I don't watch basketball. Uh, like, Rick oh, Pitino. Okay. He was playing for Rick Pitino's son. Rick Pitino okay. got the job at Iona and told him he got to find another place to play. Okay. Which is crazy. No, I'm just saying... To, to your point, or adding on to your point, how they just guys, get names out. guys get names too early. They get oozing eyes when the ball is going out of bounds. And there's no real basketball being played. Now, we do got some real guys, some new guys coming up. So we're not going to knock the new guys that's coming up. But, boy, no. New York is taking a hit. No, no. Yo, athletically, there, there's... There, Every generation gets better, stronger, faster, and I just and smarter. But the the whole thing is is that the field that the competition is happening in is 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 not on the level that it used to be. It's like it's like the greatest example, the greatest analogy is what happened to hip hop. Yes, what hip hop yeah. was. Yes, the the rawness. Yeah. The, yep. the edge, the, the 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 grit of what hip hop was from its inception when two thousand got it, it turned into a joke. It turned into it turned into payola. It turned into dropping bombs. It turned into everybody sounding the same. It turned into a, a, a fad. It turned into you know, you know, it was a, it's a trick. It's all a trick. It's not even it's not even hip hop. It's 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 rhyming pop. It's rhyming pop. Pop rhyming. Whatever you want to call it. And and and, and that's kind of that's basketball looks to me like intense exhibition. That's what it looks like. I haven't watched, watched I haven't watched a game, I haven't watched a basketball game in two years. A pro basketball game. Now what I do watch. I go back and I watch a lot of the old games, high school games, college games. Preferably, I'm on my high school thing right now. And I was asking oh, no. my friend, I said, what, do you, what are you enjoying about this game right now? 
He said, yo, G, it looks better in the NBA game right now because these guys are spacing, their fundamentals are intact, and they're playing the game the right way. And he haven't watched the NBA game as well. So it, it definitely took, goes on to everything that you say. Right. Like, you know what I would like to see? I would like to see a league for young guys that has the old rules. Like that what and this is what I, what they did was when the NBA changed the rules of the NBA, the rest of society said, well, the rules of basketball must change, right? Because no, the rules of basketball don't have to change because the NBA put a gimmick into their into their programming. We could have we could have kept playing with hand checking. We could have kept playing with with L arms out like this. We could have kept playing and being successful playing the way that we were. The problem was, if we would have kept playing the game like that, it would have excluded a group of people that can't play on that level. No, they can't I, play I totally that agree. I totally league. agree. They can't. They can't do. I totally it. agree. I totally agree. And and this is why they soften up the game. They got guys playing zone in the NBA. What? You mean I done went from high school to college to every level and I'm getting paid millions of dollars? And you gonna say I can play the zone? I'm getting paid millions of dollars to play mano a mano. Imagine somebody told you that, Shay. We play the two threes, just sit in the middle. <laughs> That's that's what I'm just trying to say. I, I don't even understand that. I I don't I don't like I I don't even understand how people how the NBA has zone in it. It has zone in it. It has what is that 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 um charging zone. It has the you can't even let the guy three, cut across. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Defense in three seconds. You can't even let the guy. Um, like if a guy is making a cut from the elbow to the box, you gotta let him cut. You can't bump him. You got to let him actually walk across the lane and get the ball. That's crazy. You, there's no, there's no, and, and, and I'm a little disappointed. And, and um, I blame it on Kenny Smith. <laughs> I, I blame it on Kenny. I blame it on Kenny. Yo. I blame it on Kenny because Barkley and, 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 and Shaq, they're not from New York. I blame it on Kenny because Kenny's well, supposed Kenny, to keep it 100. Kenny, but Kenny don't make the rules. But here you go. Right. But check this out. I'm my battery get low, and I'm going to show you your picture. All right? All right. My guy still, got, my stu my, my guy still got some work to do to him, but check it out. Yo, ready, ready, ready. Yeah. Yeah. He got you with your dreads and without your dreads. <laughs> right? So you got to tighten it up. Okay, okay, okay. Everything without your dreads. All right, all right. 100% everything you do. Okay, okay. okay. So listen, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit you up so I can get your guess, right? Because going okay. into season two, which we're gonna be going into uh, after the new year, uh, I'd like okay. to say that I think your guest 97, we have uh, Abdul Fox on tomorrow, and we have okay. Jalil Tripp on Wednesday. And I'm not okay. at our hundredth. Uh, I think you're you 96. And for our hundredth guest, legendary New York City coach, we're gonna make it special, man. But Shane, I want to say this, man. I love you, brother. Brothers for life. We're gonna get up soon. All right. Even though if I gotta come to pink houses, come check you out because it's overdue. Nigga, don't come out here, nigga. You know what it is. And you come out here, you better be you better be holding something, nigga. Man, nah, I'm, from, I'm from Brooklyn. I ain't never have to hold nothing in my life. I love nah, you. Niggas dude. gonna know. Niggas gonna know that you with me, nigga. I got it. You understand? This my hood, nigga. 
Don't, don't you get it fucked up? That's right. Keep New York. We do, we don't talk. Get it? Don't go. Bunk, 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 bunk. <laughs> Yo, I love you, man. Yo, I love you. Yo, big up all my dudes. Hassan, that's, yo, that's my dude. Yo, I love you, Huss. Yo, give me a call, dude. All you dudes, give me a call. Man, no, no, nah, don't call me because y'all know how I am. <laughs> All right, yo. Peace. What? All right. Peace. Brooklyn. No doubt. Say good night. Thanks for tuning in. Basketball has live. The fishy home for New York City basketball. <laughs>